Hello everyone, my name is Rahul. In this video, let's look at how we can generate a PDF in a .NET Core Web API. I am using a library, nreco, to generate PDFs. This generates PDFs from HTML and is a C Sharp wrapper over WK HTML to PDF. This wrapper is free if you're using on the .NET framework. However, in this case, since we are using .NET Core, you need to get a paid version of this. Make sure to read the frequently asked questions to see what the limitations and what capabilities these PDF generators have. This goes with any library that you choose because most of them has one limitation or the other. For this, this can only run on an Azure web app which is backed by a VM based plan, which is basically anything above the free or shared tiers. But that's the case with most of the PDF generators. So make sure you read the frequently asked questions and the limitations of the library that you choose. I have the solution all set up here to avoid a lot of typing. I have the source code pushed up on my GitHub repository and the links are there in the description below. First, add NuGet dependencies that we require. So the dependencies that I have added are the Enrico PDF generator .lt, which is the one that's for .NET Core, and Razorlite. So Razorlite allows us to convert Razor views into HTML. We then take these HTML generated and push them through Enrico to convert them into PDF. The Razor views are under the PDF templates folder over here. So you can group them based on the different PDFs that you need to generate. In this case, the only thing I need to generate is a quote. So I have a quote file under there. It has a code.cshtml, which is the razor view, and the code.styles.scss file. I like to write the CSS in SCSS, but in this case, since there's no compile pipeline to convert these into CSS, I used an extension web compiler. The links would be there in the description below. So once you click this and say recompile file, it compiles the SCSS into CSS, which you can use in the razor views. We have a controller which is specific to generate the PDF, which takes in a PDF generation service and an HTML generation service. We'll come to this later, but let's see what this does. Basically, we pass in an ID and we specify whether we need to generate an HTML or a PDF. This is just for development purposes so that while developing, you can view the HTML in the browser and then format it as required. However, the WK HTML to PDF or the wrapper that the Enrico is using uses a very old browser. So the HTML that's rendered back might not render the same way in the browser in the wrapper. So you will need to generate the PDF to see if everything is working fine. However, to make fine tuning adjustments, I've seen it works with the browser that you have. And once you get a hang of what works and what doesn't work, we get a model from the storage. For now, I've just hard coded it because I don't want to go out to a database and write all the logic. So this gives us a quotation object, which is basically a DTO kind of an object, which has various properties like quote, quote items and customer details, which I'm just hard coding in here. Once I get a model based on the ID, I can now convert this to HTML. So I call into the HTML generation service, get back the HTML. If this is on a development view and we want to generate the HTML back, I just use that and return it as a content result. We will see how this works in a while. If I don't want the HTML, but I want the PDF, I just call onto the PDF generation service and return that as a file with the appropriate file name. We could remove this off once we are done with development, or you could move this to a different endpoint, whatever works with you. Let's go to the PDF generation service, which is the key of everything. The PDF generation service and the HTML generation service are under the infrastructure folder. The PDF generation service again takes in the HTML generation service because all it does is convert an HTML into PDF. So we generate the HTML using the HTML service and then we use the HTML to PDF generator, which is basically the wrapper from Enrico. The HTML generation service is where it uses the Razor Lite engine and then converts it into the HTML. 
The Razer Lite engine needs to have a key to get which quote it needs to use. In this case, since my quote is named quote.scshtml, I've just used convention to grab the appropriate quote. You could use this for your other quotes as well, so the same method can be used to generate the data. And note here the data is just generic, so you could pass in any model as required. That's all to the part that does the generation and converting the PDF. Let's go to the startup.cs to see how all this is wired up to work. The Razer Lite Engine Builder helps us to create the Razer Lite Engine that we used in the HTML generation service. You could use the file source as an embedded resource project or as a file system project or different other sources that's available on the library. In this instance, I've used the file-based source so that I can make changes and see that real-time on the browser. I'll show you how in a while. The use memory caching provider makes sure you cache whatever templates are generated and reuse them. Once you build it, we get an engine which is getting injected as a singleton instance into the services collection. Get the Enrico config and then use that in here. We don't need to add that into the services, so let me remove that. Set up the HTML to PDF converter and then set up the license keys as required. These configs come from the app settings.config and these values need to be populated as required. Call the begin batch and then add that as a singleton service again. So we have the HTML to PDF converter which is basically used in the PDF generation service here to generate the PDF. And we also make sure we register the PDF generation service and the HTML generation service that's used in the PDF controller. If I was to run this, you can see it opens up the endpoint and hits with one, two, three, four, which doesn't matter now because this is all hard-coded data and this will generate us a PDF. And we have the PDF generated here with all the details. If I was to give the HTML true, then I would get back the HTML file. One thing to remember is with .NET Core and the wrapper Enrico, we need to make sure the WK HTML to PDF executable is bundled along with the application. Since this executable differs based on the environment where you are hosting, like on a Mac OS or a Windows, you will have different executables. In this case, since I am on a Windows, I've got a Windows executable. You can get this from the WK to HTML PDF website, which is basically linked here. You can get the binaries from the downloads section of that. So make sure you have that in here and you have set up the properties to say copy if newer, which makes it available in the bin folder once the whole project builds. If I go into the bin folder, you can see there's debug, .NET Core, and the WK HTML file. This is the path by which the generator defaultly looks, so I've kept it in the default path like this. However, you could change this and make the necessary changes to the configuration to reflect that. If we want to make a real-time development and changes to the CSHTML file and see that in the browser, we'll need to disable the caching that we had set up. So if I comment this out and then run the project again, and of course use the HTML is equal to true, I can start seeing the data here. Now if I go back to the CSHTML file and let's say I want to make this all small letters with just save that and if we refresh here you see that reflects without needing to rebuild or stopping and starting the solution this gives us a good development time experience so that you can build out the whole template and easily remove the html endpoints if required or just leave it there that's not of much issue for you the Enrico wrapper does work on Azure Web App so you can push this to an Azure Web App and still have it generate PDFs However, there's one limitation, as I said before, that it needs to be on a VM-backed plan, which is anything above the shared or free tier. Hope this helps you to generate a PDF from .NET Core application. If you have any questions, feel free to drop in the comments. If you've liked this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to be notified of further videos in the future, please make sure to subscribe. Thank you.